Hello everyone, thank you for watching this video. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the key stakeholders or the teams that are involved in enterprise cloud, cloud environment and how they collaborate each other to make this cloud journey successful for any organization. I would also try to explain you which cloud track or which team your skills are going to fit in uh, to make this cloud journey successful. And uh, to demonstrate this um, as an example, I've taken a product based company who has multiple products, uh, you know, which are consumed by multiple customers. And um, um, these products are delivered as a SaaS applications where customers are going to access these applications online. And um, it's a responsibility of this product based company to manage these products in the cloud environment which means if the product A needs infrastructure to be set up, that infrastructure management, deployment, operations has to be taken care by the product-based company and ensuring that the application or product is highly available to the end customers. So when customer decided to by this application or a product, what they do is they will be in touch with sales or marketing team and uh, they will have the contract or product will be enrolled. And then after that, the sales team or marketing team will be in touch with the product manager or a project manager who own this product. And uh, the, it's a responsibility of the project manager or a product manager to raise a request for the infrastructure built for this application or product. So the, uh, the request can be in the form of a email in the form of a ticketing tool. So uh, the request will be raised to, uh, to the internal operations team or you know internal stakeholders. So in this example, I'm going to demonstrate as a FinOps team because they are the one who is going to review the uh, the infrastructure requirement for the product that are enrolled for, for the customer. So they are going to review the infrastructure requirement and how much it is going to cost. And based on that, once they review and approve it, they are going to raise a request to the internal help desk or build, build support team. So the build support team or help desk team have the information in handy by the FinOps team for a specific product. Let's say product A required at least a 10 to 15 servers to be built for the successful installation or configuration of this product A. So the build or help desk team is going to take some time and to deploy the infrastructure because they have to provision the resource groups, they have to provision the servers with the different operating systems and later they have to install the applications such as antivirus, monitoring systems, they have to uh, perform the uh, security scanning, antivirus scanning, and ensuring that you no, know, there are zero vulnerabilities in place um, and um, they have to ensure that the servers are patched perfectly before they release to the application or operations team. So once they do all these activities, they are going to release the servers to the application team as well as the cloud operations team. The application team is the one who is going to install the product or application that is enrolled for the customers. In this case, I will say customer one and product A. So application team have expertise and skills on the product installation, configuration and operations. So they will install the applications and hand over to the application support team and release the product to the customer one. Before they release the product to the customer or application support team, they will go through a lot of testing. They will do the testing in terms of the performance in terms of the application accessibility, they'll go through a lot of testing before they release to the customer. So in the whole life cycle of this uh, application release, so the key stakeholders are the help desk or build team and application team. Because application can be delivered to the customer once the infrastructure is ready. So in this case, infrastructure is ready after a couple of days. 
because they have to perform a lot of operations and it's not always one customer requesting the product right the customer one might be requesting multiple products there could be multiple customers requesting multiple products so there will be a lot of requests placed to the build or help desk team and they have to work on all the requests so that's why the deployment or build or infrastructure release might take some time once the release the cloud operations team who is going to manage the the of servers for the forever they have to ensure that the servers are online secure and highly available for the application to be working fine so that's how they have to do but here the help desk taking more time and application takes another week or so to configure the application and uh, you know release the application so the build process or release of application to end customer is going to take more time in this to avoid these issues or to bridge these gaps in terms of a delay or in terms of any human errors because right now in this example uh, the help desk or build team is going to build the servers manually on Azure portal or they do through a PowerShell there could be some human errors and there could be some delays as they have to go through a lot of procedures so to avoid these problems the DevOps or automation team has come into the picture their responsibility is to um, ensure that the deployment or build process uh, time is taking less so they have to ensure that the servers are built within a short period of time without any human errors right so they will be using different automation tools I would say infrastructure automation uh, tool um, using IAC tools Terraform ARN templates Azure DevOps and it's again this depends on the customer to customer company to company they might be using different tools in terms of DevOps so in this example I'm taking ARN templates or Terraform to automate this infrastructure bill for the specific products and for the customer Customers. So they might take their own time uh, if, if it is a manual uh, build, but with the automation in place, the help desk or build team is just going to build the servers and within a couple of hours. And moreover, with this automation is in place, the application configuration, application, you know, uh, installation can also be automated, which means we are also going to save the time from the application configuration as well. So overall, the automation is going to help everybody to reduce the time and to reduce the human errors. So there could be chances that the application can be uh, installed in the new infrastructure within a couple of servers with this automation uh, services or tools. All right. So that's why the, the DevOps uh, come into the picture. And that's why, you know, most of the companies are try to uh, hire the people who have some knowledge on the DevOps as well. But what cloud operations team does? So though the DevOps or automation team is helping the companies in automating the infrastructure build, but cloud operations team is playing a vital role in the organizations because they are the one who has to ensure that uh, the infrastructure on Azure is highly available and secured and it is timely uh, you know secured through latest updates or patches in the servers so they have to ensure that in case if the application team experiencing performance issues they will be looking into the server performance metrics and try to fix it so though the devops or automation team has come forward to automate the build uh, process but they are still in the face of you know automating the infrastructure operations so there could be some operations that can be automated but not everything can be automated in this example i would say the devops or automation team can automate the vm resize or disk additions disk removals or network security groups port updates uh, nsg ports updates or a couple of basic operations at azure level but they may not be able to automate everything at this stage so still the Azure operations or cloud operations skills are still needed though the DevOps or automation has come into the picture okay so here if we further drill down into the cloud operations so there are 
um, there are two so other teams that are involved other skills are required one is azure native services the other one is the non native services so if you are learning azure and if you want to become an azure uh, administrator or a senior uh, azure engineer then azure native services skills which you have or which you are going to learn is going to help you because this this is like a, a skill where you are going to manage the entire azure infrastructure that includes the network virtual network creations backup configuration dr configurations and uh, network security groups modifications or updations and uh, automating a couple of azure services uh, through azure automation account patching the azure servers through azure update manager or you know configuring the load balancer application gateways traffic managers so many other components which are available in the azure which are offered by Microsoft Azure platform. When I say non-Azure native services, it could be your firewall devices, it could be your Active Directory or DNS, uh, you know, your core infrastructure servers or, you know, operating system level. Let's say you want to configure the file share using the DFS. You want to configure the Active Directory domain services. You want to configure the web servers, IAS services. So this is something that you do at a OS level. Right. So those things are not in the scope of Azure Administrator. It is in the scope of the core operating systems or core uh, services. Like right? say, if you are a network administrator, you might be taking care of firewall. But in Azure, we do have a network role where you will be managing the uh, Azure firewall, front door services, application gateways. They are Azure native services, though they are network service network related act applications um, they are azure native services which has to be configured and managed by you but if it is the virtual appliances uh, where you build a server you install the uh, firewall applications like palo alto or barracuda uh, they are the ones which are need to be managed by the core firewall administrators if it's active directory or you know operate system level activities that has to be done by core identity team or operating system team okay so this is what you you are going to do it and what is the product development and cloud architects teams what they do product development definitely you know you might understood they are the product owners they are the one core development team who develop these products and uh, they have they, they have in and out knowledge and expertise about the products this company is delivering. And the cloud architects are one, are the one who has designed this entire cloud infrastructure, which includes the foundation services, which includes the application environment, production, development, testing environment, the entire landing zone design, is being you know designed by the cloud architects the entire application footprint is being developed or, or, or designed by the cloud architects so they will be closely working with the uh, uh, you know product development team and uh, ap application team to ensure that they are providing the right sizing information. They are providing the right uh, design uh, to the application so that once the product is delivered to the end customers, so they don't see any problems. So they are the one who is going to play a key role and working with the, all the stakeholders, I would say, which we see, which we just discussed in this, uh, you know, video. So they are going to, dis uh, they are going to collaborate with everybody. Okay, so if you are learning Azure, um, so you might, if you are a beginner, um, you are learning Azure, if you are a beginner, maybe you might be fit into the help desk or build team um, or FinOps team if you have a little, little bit of more experience. And if you have experience as an L2 engineer, you have learned, you have gained good ex expert expertise in the cloud where you can, you know, manage the Azure resources, you know how backup works, you know how NSGs are configured, how to configure the rules and how to, uh, you know, whether to allow the rule or deny the rule, you can take the decision by your own, then you can be part of the cloud operations team. And if you have some knowledge and, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, 
experience and automation tools like Terraform, ARL templates, or PowerShell scripting, and Azure DevOps, then you might be fit into this DevOps team as well. And if you have more experience into uh, all these components, cloud operations and automation with the DevOps, then uh, with along with the FinOps, then you can be part of a cloud architects team who is going to manage the uh, entire cloud uh, environment uh, design and, uh, you know, managing aspects. So this is how, um, you know, you, you can decide which team you are going to be part of it, where exactly you are standing and, you know, uh, how you have to start learning because Azure has many things. It has uh, data engineering side, it has, it is into Azure uh, administration, Azure development side, Azure DevOps side, security side. So many, many things are there. So now we can see this is the sample, uh, uh, sample, <clears throat> um, environment that I can explain, uh, I, I just explained you, and these are the uh, key stakeholders uh, which you see in the organizations and uh, which you'll be working with them on a closely manner. Okay, so you'll be part of a cloud operations or FinOps or help desk or build or DevOps team or cloud architects team. So depends on your current experience and skill set, you'll be part of any one of these team. And there could be other teams. There could be a merge of uh, build as well as the cloud operations uh, because they fall into the same category. Maybe sometimes the build and auto automation can be part of the same team. It's all very depends on the organization to organization, but eventually this is the whole concept, uh, you know, how the request plays and how, uh, uh, the we build the infrastructure and how we deliver the application to the end users and why DevOps has come into the picture and what is the Azure native services and not non-native services, what is the role of a cloud architect. So the in, in, the, in the upcoming videos, I'm going to demonstrate more about uh, different learning paths and which path you have to choose and what services you have to learn to be part of InOps or build or cloud operations and DevOps or a cloud architects team. So uh, thank you for, thank you again for watching this video. Uh, I'll be sharing a, another video which talks about the uh, roles or services that you have to focus more to, to become a Azure engineer or a cloud engineer um, in the Azure environment. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, see you in the next video. Bye for now.